Our first speaker of the morning is Mark Callahan. He maintains MrSaltWaterTank.com. He is also the creator and star of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Since 2010, he's authored over 260 episodes and has generated more than 6.2 million views. Uh, he's co-author of six books and a number of magazine articles. And today he's going to be talking to you about a second tank, a new start, second love, or giant PTA. Please put your hands together for Mark Callahan. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, everyone, for being here on early on a Saturday morning, making the effort to get up. Is everyone having a good time so far? Yeah. Yes. Everyone's here. No one's run away yet from the hurricane. How many of you are from Florida? That's why everyone's in the room. They're like, whatever. <laughs> Bring it. As long as you don't touch my tank, you can come through Florida. Don't worry about the family, just the tank. It's what's really important, right? It's all right. You can kind of just say yes under your breath. I won't say anything to your spouse. It's all good. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, Masna, for putting on another great Magna and having me out. Uh, it's great to be back in uh, the Masna crowd, in the Magna crowd, seeing everyone, seeing what's new, uh, talking with you all. I put shows on on YouTube, which is great. The next day I wake up and get a view count, and I'm like, okay, this many people watch the show. But when I get to come here, I get to see you all, meet you all, hear about your tanks, interact with you. So thanks for coming to the show, and thanks for coming out this morning. How many of you have never heard about me before? It's okay if that's you. Yeah, okay, all right. Not a problem, just checking, wanted to get a sense. Give you a little rundown about where I came from so I can talk to you about second tanks. I started in the saltwater tank hobby in 1989. I don't look like my father at all, by the way. Um, this is dear old dad. I came down the stairs Christmas Day, 1989, and this was my 75 gallon Perfecto tank with the oak trim. How many of you have had that tank? Exactly. How many of you are from Florida who had that tank? Uh-huh, it's a trend. <laughs> so that was it, right? A 75-gallon tank. That's how I got started. My father lived vicariously through my brother and I, so I think he really wanted the tank, so he got me a tank. Not a bad way to live. Move fast forward about, oh, 20-ish or so years. I started a website called MrSaltWaterTank.com and decided I would start making videos and start this little thing called Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. And as Tim said, that grew into a couple of different things, one of them writing a series of books. And then one day someone said, hey, why don't you build me a saltwater tank? I said, okay, sure, let's talk about that. This was the first tank that I ever built in Austin, Texas. Uh, this was lit by the first generation radions. So those of you that uh, still think LEDs don't grow corals, they did in 2010, and they still today. Um, time progressed, different projects got a little bit different. Uh, less TV work, more building projects. This is a tank in the second story of a house in Washington, D.C., which was almost dropped, um, which when it comes to moving your tank, hire movers, because if they drop it, they have to buy you a new one. Here's a hint, your buddy who dropped it probably won't buy you a new one, or they will no longer be your buddy. And then clients started calling me back. This is the same client, built their dream home, wanted their dream tank. This is a 10-foot peninsula tank in the entry of their home. And then you get called and get to do kind of strange things. This is a 300-gallon tank in wall, also in Washington, D.C. This tank is here. Can you all see the, can you see that? Is that, yep, yeah, okay, so the tank's here. Filtration is 30 feet on the other side of the house. Through a closet, through a bathroom, through a crawl space, through the laundry room, <laughs> into the fish room. She's laughing, but it's like, that's normal, right? Like, I just cut a hole right through there. Not a problem, we'll make it happen. And then sometimes clients call you at the perfect time when it comes times to put in a saltwater tank was right before they get started. It always cringe when people call me like, I just finished my house, I want a tank. I'm like, how do you feel about cutting freshly laid drywall? Like, I just got in there. I'm like, I know. But sometimes clients call you right at the right time when they say, we're just getting started, we want a saltwater tank. And then they tell you the perfect way when it comes to remodeling a house or building a house, which is the saltwater tank has to be the focus of the house. Exactly, that's how it's done. So this is a farmhouse in Virginia. This is what it looked like when I first walked into the project and they told me they were gonna gut the house. That's the same room, the same shot afterwards. Uh, that client was also had this thing called a basement. I don't think you all have that in Florida because uh, it'd be underwater and there'd probably be a gator in there. <laughs> so he got to do a fish room in his basement. Uh, this was a fun project because the it was an old farmhouse, so if you look over here, this red thing that's kind of peeking out on the corner here, 
That's actually an old uh, oil tank for an old oil, oil boiler. There's no way to get it out of there, so it's forever in there. There's a water treatment, a water softener here. The main power to the house is here, so I had to put the life support in the center of the room, which turned out to be a fun project. And then sometimes you get to put tanks in houses that you worry about even walking in. This is a 20,000 square foot house in the Nashville, Tennessee area. The floors in this house actually came out of a castle in Transylvania. Uh, most beautiful hardwoods you've ever seen, but I was like, you want me to put a saltwater tank on top of these floors? <laughs> uh, luckily, I had to think my Neptune Systems Apex keeping an eye on that so I can sleep at night. And not all the time, I'm not always doing big tanks. This is a 90-gallon tank also in Nashville, Tennessee. This client came to me and said, you know, I've got three boys. They're getting older. I would like to spend more time with my son. If I put a saltwater tank between their rooms, there's a bedroom here, a bedroom here, and one over here. If I put this tank between all their rooms, they will help me take care of it. Those of you who have kids in the room are laughing. <laughs> didn't quite work out that way. Luckily, the tank was low maintenance, and it did really well. Uh, and then every now and then, lady reefers. Where are the lady reefers in the room? A couple of you? OK, this is good. Every time I talk, there's more and more of you. Thanks for bringing your friends. We need more of you. Here's a hint. If any of you are single and looking for that special someone, just look around. <laughs> How many single men in here who are reefers? What the heck? OK. So you, you, anyway, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll stop there. She came to me and said I could have a sports car. And by the way, Mary Kay, she was thinking about a Corvette. One of my friends here, here and um, used to work for GM. So she could have had a Corvette, or she said I could have a reef tank. I'd rather have a reef tank. I said, that's a great idea. <laughs> so we put this tank in her office, took over her break room. Because employees are supposed to work, they're not supposed to break. Um, so this was her. <laughs> Her fish room, she spends about 20 minutes a week on her 450 gallon tank. That's about how much that tank is in terms of water volume. Um, so this can be done with automation. Also, we get to do strange projects every now and again. This was a house in Buffalo, New York. Any of you all from New York? There you go. I was going to say, there's got to be Florida, right? Half of you all transplanted. <laughs> so why the back of this house had a slanted roof? No one could answer that question. Uh, someone on social media said it's really easy. It's buffalo. There's beer and there's buffalo wings, so they made a slanted roof on the back of this house. So then, most recently, this is my uh, most recent build. This is a 12-foot-long 12 12 step-down tank that we put in a room at a house, not a house, a commercial space in Idaho. So you can't, I'll show you the tank in a minute. There's an upper part where most tanks are just a rectangle. This tank falls off down here. There's a lower section. So this tank was built on the stand, built by Planet Aquariums, the only people I would trust to build me such a tank. It's built on the stand. It will never leave the stand. You can't get it into your house or building without taking it off the stand. So how do you get a 12-foot long, 36-inch wide, 30-inch tall tank into a building when you have to forklift it in? You just cut a hole in the side of the building and put it on a hinge. It's like, OK, the guy, the owner is very handy. He's like, I'll just cut a hole in it, put the whole thing on a hinge, we'll roll it right in. Works for me. <laughs> So we drove this tank in uh, with two forklifts and set it down, um, and it will forever stay on the stand. And I'm pretty sure whenever he sells the building, they get the tank as well, because he's not moving it back out. <laughs> uh, and then you get to do fun things. One time, clients called me and said, hey, we want to go somewhere and see the fish and our tanks in the wild. We want to do a group trip. So I've put together a couple group trips. Uh, this is us in the Great Barrier Reef, uh, just hanging out, doing some snorkeling. We're going back this year as well, where we get to see the animals from our reefs on the Great Barrier Reef and do some collection as well. So that's been a lot of fun, getting to see Mother Nature's reef tank and learning things along the way. And the chapter kind of culminates with someone who was at a Magna once came up to me and said, hey, you should do a Mr. Saltwater Tank store. And I was like, no, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. He came back to me four years later and said, why don't you start doing videos for saltwateraquarium.com? Um, so those of you who follow me, I now do videos twice a week, two episodes on saltwateraquarium.com, which is a lot of fun, getting to crank out a lot of uh, content is there as well. So that's enough about me. Let's talk about your second tank. How many of you have more than one tank? How many of you have more than three tanks? More than five tanks? More than ten tanks? Okay, so more than five, but less. We're talking saltwater tanks. Freshwater counts for nothing. <laughs> How many? Seven. seven. Anyone have more than seven? No. We'll get you a $25 saltwateraquarium.com gift certificate because you probably need to maintain those seven tanks. I'm guessing. 
So at some point, whether you have one tank and you're thinking about another tank, or you have seven tanks, seven, seven tanks, are you still married? Just curious. You are. She's a special woman. Okay. <laughs> you say, hey, honey, and let's face the facts again. It's mostly guys in this hobby, so I have to say guys and he, talking to she. Sorry, ladies. That's how it is. I understand there's some of you ladies who come to your spouse and said, I'm thinking about a second tank, and your spouse probably gave you. <laughs> or maybe they just gave you the silent treatment. That only works one way. So if guys give the girls the silent treatment, it doesn't work. <laughs> Again, it's sorry, ladies. It's mainly men. Or... And then they say, well, what's wrong with the tank that you have now? Which is the wrong question to ask. <laughs> Don't ask that question. And the thing is, for you to want a second tank, why do things have to be wrong? It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't mean you want to go to get a second tank because something is going bad in your tank. You may want to get a second tank because everything is going so well, and now you want to frag your corals and maybe have a frag grow-out tank. How many of you have a frag tank or a grow-out tank? Ah, now. See, there you go. So, or maybe you say, you know what, I really like what I have in my tank, but I always would like to have X fish. Let's go put in a species tank, whether that be seahorses, pipefish, mandarins. It depends on what that thing is. A specialized second tank can be set up just for these type of animals. I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. It's a great way to give them what they need on their own because these guys have special needs. So you can do that in a species tank. Or you're like a lot of my clients and you're in the hobby and then you got out. How many of you have left the hobby and come back? And that includes me, I did as well, all right? You can never really stay away, so there's really no need to leave because you're gonna come back anyway. So if you got out for whatever reason, there is some gap of time when you were in the hobby and then you got back out. Again, that's not a bad thing because I did the same thing. I got in the hobby about 1989, uh, and I think I, from what I can remember, I got out somewhere in the 1991 range. Uh, fast forward 20 years, uh, a little less than 20 years, and I got back in. So I said, all right, I'm going to get back in the hobby. I know how to do this thing. But then I started looking around, and you find out that what you knew then really isn't used anymore. We don't do it that way anymore. If you went to talk to your local fish store, or you jumped on a forum like Reef to Reef, you're like, hey, I'm going to do it this way. And everyone's like, who's that guy? What is he doing? For example, here's dear old dad with me again. This is 1989. Yeah. Under gravel filter. How many of you have had those? That's me too. How many of you still have those on your saltwater tank? Exactly. We don't use those things much anymore. It just, we've evolved. We've gotten a little bit better with saltwater tanks. To give you all some context, when I first started in saltwater tanks in 1989, there were no reef tanks. Like if you could keep Xenia alive, let alone Aptasia, you were some kind of reefing hierarchy god. And now it's like, what, are you kidding me? So things like under gravel filters, you don't use it anymore. Things have evolved. We don't really use these anymore. Where are the halide people in the room? Okay. Usually you all sit together. With that, no. <laughs> you're like, you got the sign. You're like, you're halide? Yeah, I'm halide. <laughs> you want to sit with me? Yeah, you can sit with me. <laughs> Where are the T5 people? Okay. You're all usually tight together. So nothing wrong with halides or T5s. I mean, we used to ride horses to work and use a typewriter. <laughs> It's cool. You still buy books in physical form. There's nothing wrong with that. It can work. We don't do things anymore. So you get back into the hobby and you have to relearn what, how to do this thing. It's called reefing, keeping saltwater tanks, so it's an opportunity. <laughs> you get to start all over and learn things all over again. And as I learned through my own experience, this was my 90-gallon tank, once you get back in with the mindset of, hey, how I used to do things have changed, I'm going to learn this thing all over again as a beginner, because there's nothing wrong with being a beginner, that's when you have a lot more success. Case in point is myself. When I got back into the hobby, I set up a 30-gallon tank with an undergravel filter because that's how it was done. That's how I thought it was done in my mind. I quickly learned better. Once I got to the 90-gallon tank and said, hey, I'm really going to relearn this thing, I had a lot of success with my tank. And a lot of my clients all did the exact same thing. Every single one of my clients that I've talked to pre previous to giving this talk said, hey, were you in the hobby, and then you got out, and then you got back in? They said, yeah, all, all of us. We all got back in. They were out, and they were back in. So a second tank, whether that be a gap in time or not, it's an opportunity for a fresh start. You can learn again, and it's a great opportunity to get rid of certain things that 
maybe you weren't so thrilled about. Who has this in their tank? Exactly. <laughs> Who wishes they don't have this in their tank or didn't? Okay, some of you like it. There's something wrong with that. For those of you that don't know, this is Pulse and Xenia. This stuff will survive any hurricane, any zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Remember, when I first started in 1989, this wasn't kept right about the time I got out. If you could keep this stuff, you were like a reefing god. And now, like, no one wants it. If you say, hey, I'm starting a tank. I would like some coral. People will show up at your door with gallons of this stuff. <laughs> Just say no. Or this stuff. Ben's favorite coral. This is green star polyp. It looks really cool. It does look like grass. It moves around in the flow of the tank. Here's a hint, guys. The ladies always like it. If you want to put it in your tank, put it on a little island and don't let it touch anything. Just put it on isolation. Keep it away from things. It will take over and you're never going to get it off the rocks unless you take the rocks out, which then it's a good time to get your second or third tank and learn better. Or get things out of your tank that swim around that you just can never catch. <laughs> Ever. But they kill everything in your tank. How many of you had this fish? Or some variation of a mean damsel? Some damsels are nice. I had that guy too. They're a lot of fun to see in the ocean. They're not so much fun in your saltwater tank. Now, I just did a show on damselfish. I can't give them all a bad rap because I just did a show on some nice types of damselfish. I actually just put some damsels in my tank, so I'm sorry, damsels. You're not all bad, but most of you are. So now's a great time to get those things out. You now know better. Get them out of your tank. When you drain the ocean, they have nowhere to go and then they're yours. Please give them into a good home. Don't flush them down the toilet or release them in the waterway. So removing the plague is a great reason to start all over. It's a chance to learn again and get rid of things that just don't work. We don't use these things anymore. Bottom line is you're smarter now. You know better. And then you say, OK, well, where do I go get some stuff? Well, Craigslist sounds like a good idea. Here's a tank in Nashville um, that's up for sale. And as you learn more, you look at that and go, that's probably Texas holy rock. That's a freshwater thing, therefore it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> this is not what I want to do, but it looks really good because it's 200 bucks for all of this. I can probably talk them down if I haggle them. Maybe we go that way. But then you look and you read the fine print over here and it says, freshly built, decided to go bigger. Happens every time, right? This first, that person should be in this talk learning about their second tank, what to do. So upgrading, who likes the idea of a bigger tank? How many of you are not holding up your hand because your spouse is sitting right next to you? <laughs> You're like, mm -mm, no, 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 no. Upgrading your tank. This is a great reason to get a bigger saltwater tank and a second saltwater tank, or your third or the fourth or the seventh. All right. Now, bigger can be better when it comes to tanks, but not always. We hear that a lot in the saltwater aquarium world. Bigger tanks are easier to care for. But the catch is when you get to a bigger tank, you're thinking about a bigger tank, you actually want to make it worth it. Make that effort worth it. Here's a hint, upgrading the saltwater tank is not the easiest thing in the world. There's a fair amount of headache involved with it. I've been through it plenty of times, so make it worth it. If you're gonna go through that effort, even if you're tearing it down, you're getting rid of everything, you're starting all over, make it worth it. Now, what does that look like? Let's look at an example. And this is an upgrade that I did myself. 55 gallon tank. It's 48 inches long across the front. You say, okay, great, I'm gonna upgrade. I'm gonna upgrade to a 90 gallon tank. That's almost double the water volume. That sounds like a lot, especially to your spouse. But it also is 48 inches long across the front. It may be a lot of water volume, but it's not that much bigger in terms of a tank and in terms of the inhabitants that you can keep in that tank. So if you're going from a 55 and you wanna make an upgrade, I would look more in terms of water volume, I would look, be more interested in making a longer upgrade in terms of dimensions of the tank. Longer across the front because saltwater fish like to swim this way as opposed to this way, deeper front to back, taller I'm not as interested in because most saltwater fish don't swim this way. That's for freshwater or for guys who make TV shows, really bad TV shows about saltwater tanks. <laughs> With phone booths. Here's the other thing about upgrading your saltwater tank. In six months, it's going to feel small. When you first get that new tank, you're like, whoa, I got all this room. This thing is huge. And then in six months, you'll be like, it just doesn't feel that big anymore. Maybe I should have gone bigger. You're probably not going to tear down that tank to go one foot bigger or one foot wider. So make that move up worth it because it's going to feel small in not too long. You wish that you went bigger. And if that means tearing down a wall or adding on to your house or moving to get a bigger tank, that's perfectly okay. I, you can tell your spouse that I told you it was fine. 
makes perfect sense. Why not do it? Now, not everyone is putting a second tank, getting a second tank because they're tearing down their old one or their upgrade. Some of you are getting another tank because you want multiple tanks or seven tanks. Here's the thing about multiple tanks, and it's a hard lesson that I've learned along the way. One tank becomes your favorite. The other one becomes the little child that you don't like, that's not your favorite, that you would rather just go away. This is especially true if that second tank is a smaller tank, especially an all-in-one tank. You've got your big reef tank or your big fish only tank. With all the bells and whistles, it's got a skimmer, it's got an auto top off. Maybe you're doing automatic water changes. It largely cares for itself. And then you have this little thing here that you put your hand in and it overflows and seems to grow algae really well and doesn't grow coral. Like, why are you in my life? Second tank, all, one of them is gonna be your favorite. Now this can work in the other direction. If your big tank starts going downhill, then your little tank is gonna get all the attention and your spouse is gonna go, why do we have this big thing in our house when that one looks better? And then at that point, well, I'm sorry, you kind of hose yourself on that one. So having a second tank, why would you do this? Well, we talked earlier about species tank, and we talked about frag tanks. Either way, whichever route you go, the easiest way to do it is to tie it into your existing system, make it an accessory to what you already have. How many of you with multiple tanks have it tied into your existing tank? And those people are all smiling. Not a coincidence. All right, so tie it into your existing tank. This is by far the easiest way to do it. This is my frag tank sitting in my fish room right next to my sump. Here is the water line coming over from my return line. I just branched it off and water comes in here, then it drains into my existing sump. This system becomes part of the whole water volume and chemistry of my big tank. I only have to monitor chemistry, do water tests. How many of you actually do your water tests? How many of you are lying? <laughs> Right, like one system, you do one water test, you do one water change, you clean one skimmer cup, and everything is handled. It makes it very easy. I, like some of you, have an addiction, and I added a second frag tank to my system. This is a little 10-gallon frag tank. I had some open counter space in my fish room. I was like, I don't use that for anything. Let's put a fish tank there. It's my fish room. I don't have to clear that with anyone. You just do it. Someone told me once the best way to upgrade your saltwater tank if your spouse isn't into it is to wait until they're gone and then put the tank in because when they come back, there's nothing they can do. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's probably some truth to that, especially with this person because they drilled a hole in the floor and put in a steel post. <laughs> you got some guts. Luckily, they're still happily married. They just had an anniversary last week. So tied into your existing system. Now, it can be small, it can be big. This is a large grow out system uh, tied into a 700 gallon tank in the guy's basement in Utah. He had an unfinished basement, so he walled it off. He made himself a fish room. These are large, I don't know how many gallons, but these are large about four foot by four foot by four foot vats, uh, plastic harvesting vats. Um, and he put two of them together and he tied it into his existing system. Here's a reverse shot, here's the grow out tanks, here's his main tank back here. So this is all tied into one. He doesn't have to maintain this system separately from the big system back here. He's clearly very dedicated to the hobby. <clears throat> so here's another little layout of the room. You can see some people checking the grow on out here, and the main tank is right behind it. By far, if you're adding a second tank, tied into your existing system, make your life very easy, especially if it's a frag tank, and I'll add another footnote to that, is especially, especially if it's any kind of species tank. Seahorses, how many of you have seahorses? How many of you like your seahorses? Okay, I'll have to talk to you afterwards. How many of you have had a seahorse tank that's not tied into your existing system? And you're still happy. All right, overall, seahorses tend to be dirty eaters. They produce a lot of waste, and keeping them in a small tank is a recipe for disaster. It's much easier to tie it into your existing system. That way, if that dirty water gets dumped into your existing system, your existing system can handle it. Back when I started, well, even 10 years ago, it was all about no nitrates, no phosphates. Now, if these guys producing a lot of nitrates and phosphates, people would almost come over and take the water from you because now we want nutrients in our tanks. As I said at the beginning of the talk, things have changed. We do things a little differently now. Pipefish, super cool fish to keep. Not so great in a reef tank. They're very small. Some of your larger fish may think they're food, especially if you keep trigger fish like me. Feeding these guys can be pretty difficult. They're not the most aggressive eaters in the world. You've got a lot of aggressive fish swimming around. They're not gonna get a chance to eat. Especially true with these guys, the mandarins, whether it be the green mandarin, the target mandarin, the red mandarin, 
I've kept one of these guys, and they're the world's most indecisive fish ever. You put food in front of them, assuming they even eat frozen food, which is a hard thing to get them to do, and they look at the food and they have an internal debate. And they're like, <laughs> check it out, it's food. I think I'm going to look at it from over here. Do you think I should eat it? I don't know. Maybe I'll, yeah, I'm going to, no. I don't think I'm going to eat it. Yeah, I'll eat it. And by that time, if you have any other fish in your tank, as you all know, you put food in there, it's a feeding frenzy, that food is gone. These guys don't get a chance to eat. You make a species tank, you can give them what they need, you can isolate them in their own little world, and then you can feed them however you want. Turn off the flow, they have no competition, you can set up the biotope, what works best for them, whether it be the seahorses, the pipefish, or randoran, you can give them their own little world, and it makes it a lot of fun. I built a, a fish tank for a client, I actually rebuilt a tank for him, we put in a fish room for him, and we took his old refugium, which used to be under his tank, and now we're gonna put it on a taller stand above his sump, and he's gonna have an anemone tank in his fish room with a pair of clownfish, a couple anemones. It's two by two, it's a nice little cube. It's a fun thing to have just in his fish room. So frag tanks or even species tanks are usually smaller. Don't think that putting one of these in your system means you have to put on some 55 gallon tank or some big 200. If you want to, that's cool, send me some photos, I'll add it to the talk. The thing about smaller tanks is smaller gear usually isn't so great when it comes to saltwater tanks, especially skimmers. Small skimmers, the ones that fit in the back of your all-in-ones, they're usually just, they don't work so great. They work okay, but then you have your nice big skimmer on your main tank, which just works really well. Then you have this one over here in the small tank that doesn't skim very well. One's gonna get attention, the other one isn't. So skimmers, they, when they get small, they don't tend to work very well. Media reactors. Small pieces that don't fit together well, it's hard to load up the media. Again, you see where I'm going with this. Smaller tanks can be a pain if you plumb it into your existing system and it makes your life much, much easier. Then we start adding on more gear to our tank. Some people are like, oh, another tank that looks complicated, it's gonna complicate my life. It doesn't have to make things more complicated. It can, because it may require some upgraded gear. Just because you're adding new gear doesn't mean that it has to be complicated, just things are changing around a little bit. For example, if you have a 450 gallon tank, then you add 200 gallons of grow out or species tanks or frag tanks, all of a sudden your skimmer may not be big enough for the new system anymore. So now you need a bigger skimmer. Maybe you need bigger media reactors. You're probably gonna need more lights, whether that's a species tank or a frag tank. You're gonna need different lights between the two, but you want to see what's in those tanks, I'm assuming. You might need a bigger return pump. This happened to me on my system. When I put in my 60 gallon refugium, I needed more flow. The return pump that I had, I was running an Ecotech Marine uh, Vectra L1. It simply didn't have enough flow coming out of that pump to power my main display and power the refugium, it especially didn't have enough flow once I added that second frag tank. So I replaced that um, with a Red Dragon pump. It got me a lot more flow. I'm not necessarily getting more flow into my display because a lot of that flow is being branched off into your, my frag tanks and into my, what will become one day, a refugium. So if you're thinking about adding a second tank, you may need more gear that's gonna to add to your tank. Not a bad thing, it's just something to keep in mind. Certainly if you're going bigger, this guy needed a lot more lights. He's got lights, multiple lights now hanging off his ceiling. He's still in the Stone Age, he's running T5s. Um, and he needed more flow in here, so it can get more complicated, but it doesn't have to. So you're thinking, well maybe I'm not gonna keep make my life complicated, I'll just go multiple second tanks. Again, one always becomes the favorite and one becomes second best. How many of you have multiple tanks that are all separate? How many of you love them all equally? A lot less, a couple of you, most of the time it doesn't happen. In my experience with the multiple tanks I've kept, one gets all the attention, one is a pain in the tail and it always ends up getting broken down anyway. So if you're thinking about adding a second one and you wanna keep it separate, look, it can be done that way. I would encourage you to set it up in such a way, gear that's very reliable, and set it up in an easy tank. Maybe you put a softy tank out there. Maybe you just have a display type of refugium that just grows macroalgae. I wouldn't be interested in having a large SPS tank and then trying to keep a 10 gallon SPS tank. One's gonna get your attention. One you're gonna like, the other one you're not. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna break it down and put all that coral in your main display anyway. It always happens, and especially with all-in-one tanks. All-in-ones are great, they seemingly great when you first get them because everything's there, you don't have to plumb any sumps up or this return pump craziness. It's all in the back, it's very easy. Every single client I've ever talked to has had an all-in-one, they always say it was okay. First it's great and then they're like, ah, just things I didn't like about it. They either ended up upgrading it, sometimes they tied into your existing system. 
So I would encourage you, if you're thinking about an existing tank, tie it into your existing system, keep it simple for yourself. You may have to upgrade your gear, which isn't a bad thing, but tying it into your existing tank is gonna be the easiest way to go. And then you have a lot of new opportunity, whether you're getting back into the hobby or trying a species tank to learn new stuff, go into it with a beginner mind and enjoy that second piece of the saltwater tank world, a slice of the ocean that's in your house because we're all in this together to enjoy it. Make it easier on yourself so it's something that you actually enjoy uh, and get a lot of pleasure from. With that, I'll turn it over to questions.